Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and welcome to edition number 13 of my This and That series. And in this video, I have several follow ups plus a few other things to show you, so stand by and I'll try to keep it concise. But I wanted to follow up on uh, what I talked about in one of my videos called uh, Tubal Kane uh, Repairs a Stevens uh, Model 26 Crack Shot Rifle. And in that video, and 17,000 people watch that, and there's about 300 comments. But uh, I posed a question regarding, are you having trouble finding 22 ammo in your part of the country? So take a look at, uh, at what people said, and it seems to be a universal problem around the United States that you cannot get this or you can't get it at a reasonable price. There are shortages, so uh, I think you'll enjoy those comments. And there's also some links in there to some articles that are trying to explain what has happened here. But I've been recently traveling, and I was in Cody, Wyoming, and I stopped at uh, a gun store. Well, let me back up. On the way out there in Mitchell, South Dakota, I stopped at Cabela's, and they had no common ammo. You could buy the $10 a box premium target uh, ammo but I'm not interested in that for plinking. So I went to a couple gun stores in Cody and one uh, did not have any but they had the premium and then I went to a smaller obscure one and they had all you wanted here and it wasn't cheap but it was $4.95 a box so that's 20 bucks worth and there's no uh, gun card or any nonsense like that uh, required in in uh, Cody or I guess Wyoming. However, here in Illinois we have some of the strictest laws that uh, there are about guns and you have to have a, a firearm registration card and all that to buy ammo and to buy guns, but yet you know how rampant the crime has been in Chicago. So uh, that's enough uh, uh, talking about 22 ammo, but I'm glad to get just a little stock. This is only 200 rounds and it really comes to about 10 cents a round. So all right, let's move on to some other things. I'm going to talk about some of this stuff in a minute, so uh, bear with me. I know I've beaten this subject to death, but I keep getting uh, comments from people. And many people have said that it's a Ruhmkorff coil. Now look that up uh, on a Google search, and you're going to see hundreds of pictures of Ruhmkorff coils. I guess that's how you say it, and that's named after a man in about 1810. And I do not see any pictures exactly like that, but they're similar. So have a look at that. Also, many people have said that it's a telegraph receiver. So this is still up to the jury here. But uh, I have a cord here, and I have my 12-volt power supply. And all I can get out of this when I connect it is... I don't know if you can hear that. A little bit of buzzing, and watch that. And I've tried all kinds of different adjustments here, and it doesn't seem to matter whether these are in position or not. I know there's some wires missing. But that's all I can get out of it, and that, but that's just with 12 volt. I don't really know what the voltage is. So I think I'll put this to rest, and unless something major comes up, we're not going to talk about this anymore. I really like tapping fluids. And there are many different brands, but these are some of the major brands. Certainly Rapid Tap and uh, Tapmatic are. But if you look at any one of the cans, it's going to tell you here, not, well, where does it say here? Someplace. Recommended for all metals except aluminum. On this one, uh, yeah, you got to look to the back, and it's also going to say, uh, do not use on aluminum or plastics. Not recommended for aluminum. And then it says something on here as well about, uh, <laughs> here it even says, for all metals except aluminum in real small print. So I'm going to use some of that on aluminum right now and show you why you shouldn't use it. And uh, if you want to use a tapping fluid, you need the kind that's called Alumatap or Alumacut. There's various names for it depending on the manufacturer, but do not use these. And uh, take a look at what I got to show now. This is 3 8 thick scrap aluminum, rolled aluminum. I'm not sure of the alloy, but uh, I've drilled some holes 1364, so I will tap quarter 20, and I'm going to use easy tap. 
and uh, see what happens here. I know what's going to happen because I already did a couple holes, but uh, some of you might find this extremely interesting. I did say some of you. Just for good measure, put just a little more on. Alright, that's far enough. Now, watch the results. Look at that black gunk. Oh, does that smell? There are some times when I would see smoke coming out of a hole, and the same thing might happen if you're drilling. So do not uh, drill. Now, I don't see that this hole is torn up, but there are times when I have seen the hole, uh, the threads seem to disintegrate. Also note the stain. I'm tapping the hole next to it using uh, tap free. Did not seem to happen with that. Oh yes it did too, but not as bad. Interesting, huh? A local friend of mine recently gave me a box and it had a black tape and, uh, and other things in there, including this butyl rubber that is used by electricians for waterproofing and uh, weatherproofing and so on. You've probably seen it and I don't know what trade name, there is none, it was generic. But when you pull it apart, see what it does? But he just suggested there's a lot of different uses for this in a machine shop. One being to ball it up like this, like blackjack gum. Remember blackjack gum? And put it on the end of a rod or something. It could be a smaller piece and you're going to reach down and and uh, pick something up. It would be handy for that. Also probably for uh, pasting things, maybe a blueprint on the side of your machine. This may be oily. It's not going to tolerate it if it's oily. But And just about any little thing your, your heart can desire. So if you run across some of that butyl rubber, give it a try. And thank you, Dale. I'm repeating myself, but I was recently in uh, Cody, Wyoming, and went to the Buffalo Bills Center of the West, and it's a wonderful museum. There's five museums in one, including the Gun Museum, and I'm going to do a real brief field trip on that, so watch for my road trip on, on that uh, here in the near future. I, I hope I'm not overdoing these uh, road trips, but I showed these in my last video. There's two different crescent pliers, uh, which my brother has a little uh, weakness in his hand, so he likes these for cutting uh, rod and wire and so on. And this one here that is just called a heavy-duty diagonal pliers, let's cut off a piece. Now, I know this isn't very scientific, and this is just an old bathroom scale I got at a garage sale. But perhaps you can see, and this has some validity here. Can you see how much pressure that's taking to cut it? That was right around 50 pounds. Now, the Crescent Pivot Pro claims to be 40% less effort to cut. Well, 40% less than what is the question. But I think you're going to see here that it, it does cut easier. And uh, But I don't know if it's 40%. So watch the scale here. Well, that wasn't any easier, was it? That was also at about 50. Let me try this other one again. Oh, that was only 45. That was about 50, so I don't know about that 40%, but they both cut pretty nicely. All right. Hope I didn't bore you too much with some of that stuff. 
This is Jules Kane saying uh, so long. I'll see you in the next video.